Men of Reddit, what's the most pathetic ridiculous thing another man has done in attempt to assert his dominance over you? I always feel like the guys who refuse to make room for you when walking by in the other direction are trying to assert their dominance and make themselves feel like hot crap. I never understand why people do that. I figured out the best way to handle this when I was in college and the sidewalks were narrow. Just stop walking and stand still. Now they are the only ones walking and have to go out of their way to avoid you instead of them expecting you to move. Earlier this year my boss asked me to do something, and then leaned over me and said you are going to do it. He was like, literally leaning over me because he was 6 feet 8. Dude acted like a cliche high school bully from an 80s movie and was like 40 years old so I assume he was at some point. Anyways he quit. I used to tend bar in Milwaukee, and there is nothing that triggers bros more than seeing someone drinking something they don't like. I can't tell you how many arguments began with some guy, always unsolicited unprovoked, mind you, feeling compelled to judge and educate other guys about what they're drinking, or not drinking. You drink that and it goes downhill from there. No one cares. Drink what you like and shut up. Literally last weekend some really drunk dude who I had never once met or interacted with tried to fight me, to impress the girls he was with, it was completely ridiculous, and his way of trying to initiate it was just repeatedly body checking me on the dance floor which I ignored because I thought he was just being drunk and dumb. Turns out one of his friends had to stop him from blindsiding me with a sucker punch to the face, assuming he was able to aim that well. Some people do not mix well with alcohol apparently. A former co-worker, he would just stand in the way and refuse to move. Even if he wasn't in the way he would purposely get in the way. I work in a narrow kitchen so you can imagine how annoying that could be. At one particular moment I was carrying a bulky 20 pounds box and he decided to do that. I pretended to not see him and barreled into him. He fell over and got incredibly mad at me. Started talking about how I have no muscle. It was pretty funny. It was a display of the most fragile masculinity I've ever seen. In junior high I remember this one bully that would get on his tiptoes and bow out his chest like a gorilla and get all in your face whenever he felt threatened. It was such a funny stereotype maneuver. One time at a house party, a few of us were talking to some of the girls there and one of the guys randomly started talking about how he does MMA. Then another guy joined in and those two started wrestling in front of the girls. I don't think their shirts needed to come off either but what the frick do I know. Taking your shirt off is proper MMA procedure and culture. Leaving them on could have dishonored their whole family. I work in a grocery store and sometimes help unload the delivery trucks and our delivery comes in on what we call cages. Like a 6 foot cage on wheels and obviously one that's full of toilet paper will be really light and one filled with 2 liter bottles of juice are the heavy ones. The lift that lowers them from the truck has that patterned metal floor and you have to pull the heavy cages hard to get them off. Now I'm 5 feet 8 inches and don't have a lot of weight on me but I can pull these cages off just fine but there's a guy who's like 6 feet 2 inches and is always trying to show how strong he is. So whenever I'm helping and he's there he always insists he gets the heavy cages and that I get the little guy cages. Everyone agrees he needs to grow up. Guys like that are great though because you can just chill and let them do all the annoying work if they feel the need to prove something. A friend tried to make himself look good in front of his crush by literally putting me in a random chokehold for a laugh. Turns out it was because I was talking to her. I had a girlfriend at the time. We were just talking. It wasn't a chokehold though. It was basically just a headlock. So I decided to correct him. I was fairly oblivious and didn't realize this was a failed alpha move. Creep the crap out of his crush that he would do that out of nowhere and she stopped talking to him. Apparently she quite liked him up until that point, so he kinda shot himself in the foot. Was out having a drink. Started chatting to the guy next to me when I learned he, too, is a musician. He then tells me you're not a musician. I find it offensive when people tell me they're a musician when they haven't put in the time and dedication that I have. Okay dude come down off your ego trip, Christ talked about the MBA program at his alma mater was superior to where I was getting my MBA. For clarification, he doesn't have and isn't working on an MBA, but wanted to be sure I knew he was better because he went to a school with a perceived better program. If my school had a better mega bad bus program, I would let you know it, too. 
So when I was in the 8th grade there was this one kid who hated me for no reason. I was really big for my age. So there was no way this 5 feet 1 inches guy was going to fight me. So he did something so cringy I have no idea what he was going for. I was sitting at lunch with my friends. And this kid walks up to us. And spits in my glass of milk and says in a very commanding tone. Drink. I just stood up and the kid bolted. Got a good laugh out of it with my friend though. Anyone asking what it tasted like. I did not drink the milk. The kid bolted bolted because he was a huge pee. Never wanting to get in trouble. I'm not flexing by saying that. I worked in residence life over the summer at a moderately sized college campus. The pay was good. But there were tons of broken furniture and even more pee stained mattresses. Anyway, I was good enough at doing this that I became sort of an on-site supervisor. The supervisor would tell us what building we would be evaluating emptying that day, and then I would basically take over as soon as we left. One day, we had a 5 story dorm to go through, and all of the mattresses were due to be replaced. I told the group, there were 7 or 8 of us, that the easiest way would be to form a relay down the stairs. Two people would go to the rooms on the topmost floor and toss them down the steps to the next level, and then they would toss those down the steps, all the way down until the last two people on the bottom would put the mattresses in the truck, and then, every floor, we'd swap off, so people could have the easier jobs. We're moving along ridiculously fast under this system. We cleared out a whole floor in just under an hour, and then the supervisor showed up and told me that, no, everyone needed to carry out their own mattresses because he didn't want lazy people on the team. In other words, he wanted everyone to go to a room on the 5th floor and carry a mattress down 5 flights of stairs to the truck. All through the day, he told us that it was an easy job and then proceeded to make a show of lifting up 2 mattresses on his shoulders and jumping down the half flight steps onto the landing. He did this 2 or 3 times, complete with loud grunts. To this day, I have no idea how he didn't get injured, and then berated us for being lazy. He didn't make us jump, but he made sure that he stayed to watch us do it the right way. We finished the next floor by the end of the day. But to clarify on this campus, and I suspect, many others, colleges make money over the summer by hosting summer camps. Resident life, housekeeping and telecom all have to move in a particular order through the dorms in a particular fashion and adhere to a very tight calendar. This building, in particular, would have had housekeeping come by the next afternoon, and I think the dorm was supposed to be open to summer campers the day after. Two things. One, what in butthole. Two, it was probably on some bureaucratic crap, like you all needed to take longer on it so they didn't have to find something else for you to do. It's astounding how much menial or demeaning labor work is required in a lot of jobs and those who make it more efficient are ostracized because I had to do it the hard way so everyone else does too. We once had a candidate come into the interview and legit say he wanted to sit behind the desk because he was going to be asking the questions to decide if he wanted to work with us. I think he'd gotten some bad advice about having confidence. I laughed but our HR manager flipped her crap. The only time I have ever seen her call security. Was on a 4 hour flight, in a 2 person row. The guy demanded to have full access to the middle armrest, would push my arm off it if I ever got near it. I was walking to my car after school and this guy getting in his car just yells at me you ugly aff. Bro, I flipped him off without even looking at him and he yelled B and drove off. How petty do you have to be to tell someone minding their own business that they're ugly? People that shout out of cars are cowards. Was at a party and was given the task of handing out beers to people. This guy flipped a crap, screaming saying he only drink real beer. Dude, it was cold and free. That is the best beer there is. We call them OPBs. Other people's beer. One guy I know tried to get everyone to whip out their dongs and compare sizes, and honestly it came across as one of the most insecure and childish efforts to assert dominance ever, because dong size has nothing to do with dominance. Also this is the guy when we were getting a house insisted we've all gotta be equals, despite always trying to run things. Maybe he was just a clever gay guy. A guy was mad at me while sitting at a light and was revving his engine. It sounded like he held it at the red line, and there was a big crack sound and smoke started coming out of the front of his car. The dummy blew his engine. That's when you throw your head back and laugh as you slowly accelerate forward in your 2013 Dodge Dart. 
my neighbor in front of my, I'm a guy, house had a boyfriend that would literally rip his shirt off and come outside every single time I was in my front yard. It could be 7am or midnight but it wouldn't matter to him. I could be walking to my car and here comes Mr. Gobba Jim flexing all around his yard. He would immediately go back inside when I went back inside. This went on for almost half a year until one day I saw him hop into his mega lifted truck and drive away never to be seen again. He did have pretty sweet pecs though. I would have spent a day fricking with him. Go outside for a while and wait for him to come out. Then just go back in until he leaves. Then do it again. One night in college me and my buddies were walking down the street at about 11.30pm. We were near a major university and on a street that was almost entirely college kids renting. It was a Friday night. Warm. So lots of people were out drinking on patios. Talking. Playing drinking games. Etc. Generally pretty chill. We're done pre-gaming at home and headed to a bar or something. I don't remember. Anyway. We're walking down the road and across the street. There's some people on a patio. They yell something at us. We weren't really listening, but the tone seemed friendly, or at least we get college bro am I right generally. I kinda yell back yeah man. Cool beans in return to my conversation. Apparently this guy does not like beans, regardless of temperature, because the next thing I hear is did you just frickin say cool beans and see this perfect Skylar pop color college bro storming off his porch to come across the street at us, looking like I just pee in his natural pee light. I can only respond with a confused why. Yeah? My group stops. This dude is crossing the street at us looking like he wants to fight. Him. Say it again. Bro. What did you say? Some girl behind him. Just let it go Blake Skylar Chad they didn't mean it. Me. What really? My friend. What the frick? Me. I said cool beans. Him. Get the frick out of here dude before I kick your butt. Me. Okay then. Later bro. And we. Walked off as he stayed angrily flexing in the middle of the street while this girl is tugging his arm. Trying to get him back to the house. We made it to the end of the block. About 3 more houses probably. Before my entire group just broke down laughing at the absurdity of it. I really. Really don't understand it. Was it supposed to be a prank? Was he just a drunk dong looking to fight? Did he think I was intimidated? I'm not sure. Either way. Cool beans and did you just frickin say cool beans are still a standard farewell among that group of friends. His whole family was killed in a freak chilled beans accident. The overly firm handshake is always annoying. I'm not a freak show of strength but I have a good enough grip that I can get them to back off. Not me, but my dad. My dad has season tickets for the all hockey team in town. One day, he was late for a game and arrived to see a teen in his seat with his girlfriend. My dad kindly asked him to move, explaining that these were his seats. The teen responded with a quick no it's not. My dad then showed him his season tickets, and pointed out on the kids tickets that their actual seats were a few rows up. The kid got up, and tried to square up to my dad. My father was just like really dude and ignored them. The girlfriend began screaming at him for being an butthole. Long story short, dad kindly asked kid to get out of his seat, and kid tried to intimidate my dad for this. Playing a game of pool at a bar for a beer, dude missed an easy shot and broke the cue stick on his knee. He then gets in my face to try to intimidate me, I just simple tell him look dude you are at a local's bar. He shut up and left after that. Dummy, you are correct, locals bar men we all knew each other and had everyone's back. Only time I've had to use that line, honestly was looking out for this dude more than anything. Did not want to see him get his butt kicked and any of us go to jail that night. I had a dude lose his crap after I missed an easy shot after running 3 or 4 balls. I was fairly drunk, saying I was trying to hustle him or something. He goes so heated that the bartender told to him to cut the crap off or she's calling the cops. He backed down after that. Here's the kicker. We were playing to play. Nothing was on the line. No money and no drinks. Not letting go of a handshake. It's happened a few times and always make me wanna treat it as a hostile action. Last time it happened I just started caressing their hand with my finger and the guy jerked away. I winked at him after. That's great. I've found that the best way to respond to angry dudes road raging is to blow them a kiss. They lose their crap at that. 
Once when I was walking on a street a guy was walking behind me and started to walk faster so he could pass me. I didn't care but then he just stared at me straight in the eyes and walks into a tree. The first part I can kinda understand because I find it really awkward to walk close to someone. So I'll often change my pace so I either pass them or let them go ahead. The second part is dumb and hilarious. There was this sergeant I had the misfortune of working with who was one of the worst people I've ever met. He was so toxic and alpha that people wouldn't ask questions because they didn't want to be put down in front of their peers. He would actively go out of his way go shame what were essentially kids for not knowing something. I had zero respect for that piece of work. I'd squash that crap immediately. A sergeant's job is to take care of soldiers. For example, educate. Let not cut them down. I hope his encores reflected what a POC he was. Pock equals piece of crap. What he did was crap. What he was, is a crap nko. That one guy who refuses to walk on the correct side of the hall lane RETC. Like, do you drive on the wrong side of the road, too? It was a co-ed recreational adult indoor soccer league. 20 28 year olds pretty much. And there was this one dude who thought he was some guy who should be in the pros. He was average at best, but the issue was he kept tripping people, pushing them around. There's basically a no contact rule since there were women and it's a rec league, and we all kinda had enough of him. Anyway, I have the ball and dribble for a bit with it, the whole time he is on my heels trying to trip me and kick my legs etc. Being an ex-college player, I know how it works and I just avoid it, but he was doing it to everyone including the women. Eventually I just stopped with the ball, turned around, and gave him a slight push, like no more than you would use to push a shopping cart into a cart corral. He immediately gets up and puffs his chest out and gets in my face. He's like 6 feet 2, I'm like 5 feet 10. Then he literally screams I will destroy you. I just laugh it off and walk away cause I knew I just got us both kicked out of the game. What a tool. In college, I got into an elevator and was followed in by a younger guy I didn't know. He eyed my pretty standard in every way, backpack and said my backpack is way bigger than yours. Fair enough. He had a military jumbo pack. Could have easily gone on a hike camp with it. I smiled and agreed. But he kept talking about how much bigger his was and how he couldn't fit anything into one like mine. Weird flex as the kids say. Dancing at the club minding my own business, dude starts talking to me. Guess I was dancing too close to his chick or his sister or whatever I dunno I didn't even really notice her until he said something. He goes I am paraphrasing. I was pretty drunk. You arms are so thin. Grabs my arm compared to mine. Like implying my muscles aren't worthy to dance with he, which I wasn't even doing. So just kinda laughed right in his face and kept dancing right there. He didn't say anything after that. It was weird and in hindsight I probably shoulder gotten a bit more mad. But I just couldn't take him seriously at all. I've found sincere laughter is the best response to intimidation. As long as your intention isn't to descalate. It attacks their pride. And if someone is ready to square up over insecurities like that. Blows to the ego will stick with them. Trying to crush my hand during a handshake. Generally I'll just let my knuckles fold so it doesn't hurt. I don't have a heck of a lot of grip strength so I don't try to do it back. When it happens, it's happened a couple times, I always just let my arm go limp so everyone around can see I'm not in a dong measuring competition and ask him nice and loudly if it makes him feel big and strong to try to hurt my hand. It's worked 100% of the time. They always end up embarrassed and off balance the rest of the conversation. You have a really strong grip. You must master bait constantly. The people that try to act like a psychological genius and try to analyze you and figure out what kind of person you are. My friend's dad does this constantly with me and misses the mark every time and it just makes him look like a dumbass. Recently got my first tattoo. It's a small, minimalistic one. A guy at a party keeps making fun of it when I throw the ball and be a pong as it's on my right arm I used to throw. Reason he's making fun of it is his arm is filled with big, detailed tattoos. He clearly felt I was somehow inferior due to my small tattoo. Didn't bother me too much, but that, along with other crap he'd brag about, convinced me he's not a person worth giving a dang about. 
threatened to beat me up if I so much as look at his girlfriend again. His girlfriend was my sister. I maintained eye contact whilst laughing, as she dumped him on the spot. In college, we were having a conversation about which animals we thought closely matched our personalities. One guy was a psych major, one of those that weaponized psychology by trying to psychoanalyze strangers and all that stuff. So he said he was probably a lion, and then would say everyone else were like hippos or manatees or other ugly looking fat animals. Seemed a bit transparent to me but I think he really thought he was getting away with some subversive psych trick. This is hilarious, because hippos will frick you up, they're super dangerous and dominant, and male lions are lazy as crap. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe, I publish new videos every day, until then, check another video. Bye for now.